I don't do the most, but I do a lot. I'ma make a toast, cause we still alive. No big, I feel like Pac. I shoot a shot. I'm coming in. Hot. three mr ryan mcdaniel he's a guy that uh, i was had the opportunity to play football with at the university of tulsa uh he is a north carolina central university graduate mr hbcu he's a former kansas city chief at jacksonville jaguar and a current starting wide receiver for the memphis showboats so uh man i just want to tell you man it's an honor having you on the show uh, how you been, bro? Oh, I've been great, man. It's just a blessing to hear from you. I'm just so excited just to, you know, reconnect and know yeah. that, bro, it don't even matter how long it's been. Like, we still locked in, bro. Right. It's really good, really good to hear from you. Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, for the audience, man, I haven't talked to Ryan, bro. It's been, what, some years, bro, I want to say? Yeah, it's been a couple of years, Yeah, for Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, just kind of give... The viewers, uh, just a quick intro, you know, where you, um, what you're about. Uh, obviously, I know about you, right? But um, kind of like your background, and uh, we'll dive in deeper. Uh, I mean, so I'm from Texas. Uh, you know, grew up right outside Houston. Uh, ended up moving out to North Carolina after I did my first year at Tulsa, and now that's where I stay at. You feel me? Uh, just big on family mm -hmm. and yeah just family and making sure guys first that's that's about it yeah and i bro we done had so many conversations like um just debates and stuff on the dallas versus houston thing i'm not gonna lie i, I kind of am leaning towards houston now i had the opportunity to uh visit houston man the food out there is crazy bro man it's gonna it's gonna do it every time. Uh one thing I ask you though, so how was it like in North Carolina? How was it different from Texas? Um, uh, you know, in Texas, like especially in Houston, Dallas, those are like bigger cities. Mm -hmm. But in North Carolina, it's real it's it's a little bit slower paced, it's a little mm -hmm. bit like more relaxed. I mean, there's still good people there and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but it just has a slower feel to it. It's not mm -hmm. like better or worse. It's just different. With you being out in Memphis now, like how would you describe that that overall like environment out there? Memphis has been great so far. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a lot of great food out here. So your boys yeah, the barbecue, food. yeah, yeah, sure. the barbecue, all that. Uh, nah, and there's a couple little spots that I've been to, like. I went to the Bass Pro Shop, which doesn't sound like much, but it's like this huge place and it's got like this big pyramid on top of it and everything. Mm. Um, and I've just been to a couple other little spots around the city that have been mm. cool. But it, it's got a nice feel to it. It kind of reminds me of North Carolina a little bit. Really? It's like a little bit slower, mm. but it's, it's still got a good city feel to it, though. Yeah. I like the diversity out there. Uh. I've heard that it's like a it's a pretty black city, mm -hmm. and that's what I see a lot when I walk around. But you know, it's a good balance of people. It's a good mixture, though. But I've I've seen a lot of black people out here. Oh, I looked up humility, right? And you know, there's a lot of different definitions and stuff. But one thing I found, and I'll read it off here. It says, even though humility is sometimes equated with low self esteem. This is not the case. To be humble does not mean to have a low opinion of yourself, but rather to have an accurate one and to put your accomplishments into perspective. Humility is a grace that attracts more grace. Pride closes the door to spiritual growth, but humility opens the door to your life to more of God's grace. To the humble, God gives patience, peace, and gentleness. The fruit of the spirit grows in the soil of humility. So, um, a big reason why I chose you for this topic, bro, is like 
you know, I guess my first time meeting you, I noticed like you, you're more like kept to yourself type of guy, right? And I was just like, man, like, where is he from? And, you know, uh, we got to conversating and you were like, hey, I'm Ryan from Houston, da, 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 da. And from that moment, bro, it's like you just incorporated in our circle. We just all clicked, right? I thought like you was one of the, the in our class, we had, okay, just to put it in perspective, we have the Zayvon Collins now plays for the Arizona Cardinals, right? We had a Caleb Evan now plays for the Minnesota Vikings and many more that went on, you know, like to do big things. But saying that, when we all stepped on the field, uh, we had this thing called Pride Fridays as a freshman. And <laughs> it was like basically kind of like a boot camp, I guess you can say. I remember one time you took your shirt off. I'm like, bro, is this a Greek guy, bro? <laughs> like this man must have ate the weights. And, and just to find out like you was like, yeah, I'm a walk on. And that hit me. I'm like, bro, there's no way this man is a walk on. Like, I done seen a lot of dudes more. I'm like, bro, there's no way he ain't got to offer you. Like, no, nah, I'm a walk on. And saying that is just like how you always carried yourself, bro. It's like you always, like I said, like it wasn't a, a deal where you wasn't aware of your abilities, right? But how did you keep such a, a calm nature? And knowing, like, okay, the guys around you, you know, you're on, they're on scholarship, but I'm the one that's, you know, kind of fighting for a spot. How did that kind of, um, you know, resonate throughout your freshman year at Tulsa? <clears throat> I just felt like everything I had to do, I just had to prove, you know. Really, I felt like my time at Tulsa was just about proving to myself that I, I really could play on this level. I really belonged here. Because mm -hmm. coming out of high school, I didn't get a single offer. Mm -hmm. Like, I had a couple of little D3 schools. They, they're they like, oh, yeah, we're interested. But still, nobody even pulled the trigger on me. So I was just like, right. man, can I even play football for real? Mm -hmm. So then once I got up there with y'all and I'm working out with y'all and I'm running with y'all, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So it was just about like every day trying to just prove it to myself that I really belong up here. And then I just remember uh, I wasn't on any of the special teams. I wasn't on anything. So I'm like, I'm going to just show it to the special teams meeting. Mm -hmm. And then I just remember I just, uh, we had a punt, we had a punt drill or something and I was on the look team and I just ran smack first into the lineman <laughs> every single play. Just ran him, bow! We're like, you good? I don't know, but I'm going to go do it again. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, I just kept doing stuff like that and eventually, you know, they put me out there and I just made the most of my opportunity and I feel like that's still how I play to this day. It's like, I, I don't really need too many people to be, you know, oh, yeah, Ryan, you can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it it's been, you know, me and my family for a long time in my close circle. So it's mm -hmm. like as long as they believe in me, that's all I really need. Yeah. And I like how you highlighted like the opportunity, right? Like you say, you you showed up just randomly to the special team meeting. Um, yeah. The importance of like like betting on yourself, because that's kind of like what, what I heard throughout your message is just like you just like, hey, you know, it's more about proving proving to yourself, not proving to anybody else. Um, was it difficult at all, you know, um, not initially getting a chance, but just going out there, like I said, man, like after practices, your body's beat up and stuff and you going home, like you don't have the luxury of, you know, the benefits, whether it's like stipends and stuff like that. How did you kind of like um, balance like your finances early on? Man, I wasn't going anywhere. And I bet you remember. I used to yeah. be at your crib just hungry. And you're like, you, you know you could go eat some food, right? <laughs> yeah, so I used to, I mean, I just used to make it work. And it's like, okay, I'm going to save this little bit of money. So mm -hmm. if everybody does decide to go out to eat and I feel like I want to be around the guys, I'm, I'm going to save that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I just wasn't spending any money. Yeah. Just go to the calf three times a day. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's about it. And there wasn't too much extra stuff. Uh, I always dress simple, so I've never been a one to have on all the fresh clothes and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just saving money. But definitely eating off y'all boys. Nah, <laughs> that you know, Bro, I remember you came in our crib one time. 
And I kid you not, bro. Like, if y'all all watched Friday, the bowl that Craig had, <laughs> this man Ryan had a bowl full of Reese's Puff. I think it was Reese's Puff. And he was like, hey, y'all got some milk? <laughs> some of y'all walk-ons would be like, dang, bro. Like, here I am complaining about certain circumstances. They're going through the same things. And they worried about, you know, how this going to get paid for. Um, I know you mentioned, like, it was ingrained in your nature, like, kind of at a young age to just, like, kind of, like, work for everything you have. Uh, what was your, like, family dynamics growing up? Uh, so, it's, it's me, my mom, my dad, and I have a little brother. He's about eight years younger than me so mm -hmm. he's 16 right now but uh yeah it's just always been the four of us and mm -hmm. so i grew up in texas right but mm -hmm. the rest of my family they're all from the east coast mm -hmm. so it was really just us out there so i kind of just took that mentality of it's just us you know mm -hmm. and it's like i always saw my parents make it work i don't know how they made it work mm -hmm. i don't know if we were up or if we were down mm -hmm. but no matter what they showed up the same way every single day they did everything and to the best of their abilities and i'm forever grateful for my parents i love my mom and my dad so much mm -hmm. but um yeah so it's just like and i never saw them complain or anything so it's like this is kind of just this is all I know is just let's go do it and not complain. So, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, but what has kind of always, like, fueled you and kept you going? Uh, for sure, my family, uh, my current family, because it's like, you know, I know they're making sacrifices to get me through school and to help, like, you know, get me along the process. And so it's like, if I'm going to be out here, I'm going to be work hard i'm gonna make sure you know that i'm doing it for them and then as i've gotten older it's like okay yeah i'm doing it for them but i also have a plan of having a future family so it's like this isn't just for me anymore this isn't just me playing games because i want to play games this is like you know i'm making moves so hopefully my kids can can live an easy life not an easy life but you know what i'm saying they have an easier life and and you know we get to a point where it's like we're not even worried about me or my kids. We're now thinking generations ahead. So it's just like always planning for it and stuff like that. And like I said earlier, at the end of the day, just like giving glory to God. And that's just, you put all of that together and that kind of encompasses like where I'm coming from. Like when you, when you transferred from Tulsa and went to uh, NCCU, how was that like different? Um, obviously, you know, Tulsa, that's like a small school, right? Um, D1 small school, but it's a PWI. So you going from that to a HBCU, I'm sure it was like a big, you know, huge change. Uh, how did you kind of like adjust to that early on? Was it like a hard adjustment at all? Uh, not really. It's just, I mean, you went from being around and you're like one of the few to now everybody is like you. So it's not anything crazy. It's not like, oh, this teacher is has it out for me because I'm the only black student. Or, and I'm not saying that was the way at Tulsa, but sometimes that's how people think it is. And it's not like, oh, it's such a special, crazy, monumental thing to be at an HBCU. It's just like, we're just surrounded by us. And so, I mean, that's special in itself, but that's basically what it is. You're just surrounded by yourselves. But it was a great experience. I love being at Central. Yeah, so would you suggest that? Um, because obviously the way, like, the landscape of, you know, recruiting and with the whole NIL thing, um, you're seeing more of these top athletes going to HBCUs and stuff. Is that something that you would suggest um, just for the experience as a black player or minority player? Um, so this is how I put it. I suggest to do what's best for you and your family. But if you do go to an HBCU as a black player, I do believe that you will enjoy your experience. So if going for you and your family is best to go to whatever PWI that is, do that. But I think you will have a good time if you do go to an HBCU. And you just learn a lot. And I felt like I grew up a lot when I was at Central. So, yeah. Mention, what 
is kind of three bits and pieces of advice that you would have gave your younger self going into college? Uh, I would say one is just keep going. You know, there's so many ups and downs throughout the college experience. I, I know I've had a lot. I know you can speak on it. Anybody who's going through college, there's so many ups and downs. Uh, so just keep going. Don't let people like put you in a box because, you know, we have so many dreams of doing stuff and we believe we can do all this stuff. But then people want to say like, no, this isn't how I see you or no, this isn't. But it's like, nah, if I want to do that, I can work hard and achieve it. So, so yeah, that and uh, probably the last thing is build a, a good community. That's probably the biggest thing for you. Like some of the, they got me through a lot of tough times, but also being able to celebrate with my friends at a good time, not just my celebrations, but celebrating with them and for them. Just having a good, tight community around you will always help you. So that was probably like the biggest things that I would tell my younger self. Yeah, and I like what you mentioned about um, not letting people put you in a box. Because I read some, uh, this was about a month ago. It was talking about how as, as kids, kids are the most imaginative, right? They have like all these dreams. Like when I was young, I had a dream of being an astronaut. And... Honestly, I kind of got my heart broke like the day of because I remember uh, one of my classmates, I was in about, I'll say about second grade. I was like, yeah, I want to be an astronaut. He was like, you sure that helmet going for so as the years go on, it's just like I started to learn more about, you know, that industry. And I'm like, dang, like, number one, I've never seen a black astronaut. Right. So I'm looking at all these different like odds, like how many years of school you got to go to. I'm like, bro, there's no way in heck this is possible, you know? And that kind of life begins to influence you, right? But like you said, it's just like, man, if you got a God-given dream, he put it on your heart for a reason, you know? And um, man, you can't let, there's going to people, there's going to be people that tell you like, hey man, like, you know, you need to think more realistic or like you coming on as a walk-on. I'm sure you you probably had like, hey, Ryan, like I get it, you know, but you're here like, you know, kind of just to be a body in camp, you know, and but it's like your persistence through through all of that, man, it it showed that that God had it destined for you all along. And um, speaking about your destiny, man, you eventually got an opportunity coming out of college uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs first. Right. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, how was being uh, just given that opportunity and stuff and uh, signing that contract. How was that? Well, so I didn't sign with Kansas City. Uh, okay. I went to their rookie mini camp first. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, they were like, we like you, but we didn't necessarily know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So then I ended up going to Jacksonville's mini camp. And then mm -hmm. Jacksonville was like, okay, yeah, we – you know, sign you. So mm -hmm. I was just excited. I'm just like, yo, this is the craziest thing ever. I'm thinking about when I was a little kid talking about I'm gonna play football and right. I'm like, wow, I'm actually doing it. So then I signed that. But the, both of those were just a great experience, just to be in a in a in an NFL locker room and you know, I'm wearing an NFL shirt and I didn't even pay for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all of that was just crazy to me, and I'm you know, taking pictures and sending it to my mom and yeah. all that stuff. So it, it was just a great experience, yeah. How was it catching a ball from Trevor Lawrence? Like, dude. Yeah. Just... <laughs> hey, nah. Look, the first time, because, like, the first couple of days I didn't get to throw with him. Uh -huh. Then, like, the day that I popped up, I'm like, oh, he's going to throw me the ball. I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared. I thought, I'm like, bro, I'm finna fold. I'm finna drop this in this route up here. So, like, I'm the only receiver up there. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm gonna fold in front of everybody. They gonna cut me. I'm gonna just pack my bags up. But nah, it was cool, though. It was cool. It was just different. And it was like, just being able to watch all of those guys, they operate at such a high level and they're so efficient. And I was just like, okay, I need to take my game up to another level. But, nah, it was definitely crazy the first time seeing it. And I did catch the ball, though. So they didn't cut me yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and how was how was like the the nutrition and all of that? Because I'm sure they take good care of y'all. Like just like like you said, like you're wearing obviously like team gear and stuff. But would you say like the resources is like different? Because I never got the luxury of being in the NFL locker room, but I always wonder. I'm like, man, what is that like? Like as far as like the different perks and rewards you get? Uh, nah. And coming from Central, everything look way crazy. No disrespect to Central, that's my school, but it's just like from Central to the NFL, like that's just a huge jump. So nah, it was everything was really nice up there. Uh, the training staff was great. The the strength and conditioning staff was great. Everybody just was so willing to help you and just be on top of it. Nutrition was great. They were always feeding us up there. I would talk to the nutritionist. She's like, okay, this is how we can help you get in this certain weight range so you can be most efficient. So everybody's just real serious about their business. And yeah, they're just there to help you. So it was just, it's just a great feeling, you know? Hey. You know, because uh, through that whole process and stuff, like, I'm sure, like, working with your agent and stuff, um, how does that kind of work? Like, so I know, like, when you, you know, when you get signed to a team, obviously you sign a contract and stuff, right? But how is it, like, as far as, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, like, is it one of those things where, you know, you got to, like, kind of be cautious, like, okay, I signed a contract, but... You know, da 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 da. da. I gotta kind of save for the rainy days, or is it kind of like okay, I can enjoy myself a little bit? You know what I mean? Well, I was just talking to my boy about this the other day. Me personally, I'm so used to not having money. Like I'm like I ain't finna spend nothing. <laughs> so, so I don't really have that problem. But I guess you can. I don't know how other people do it, but yeah, you know, after having asked my boy for some cereal. And then later in college, having to work, a, like I worked a couple of jobs to, you know, you know, pay for stuff throughout school because I was a, still a walk on when I went to North Carolina Central. So I had to restart that whole process. So in me, I'm just like, I don't have money. And even now I'm getting paid for this USFL stuff. And I'm just like, no, nah, I still don't have money. So for me, it's always just been like, all right, let's just save, let's just save, let's just save. And I mean, the most I spend now is just on food when I go out. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm glad you mentioned the USFL because I was going to ask about that next. Uh, what do you notice is like the big comparison between that league and the NFL? Because, you know, um, obviously there's an NFL and then the XFL, USFL is giving guys like opportunities and I've I've always been interested in like reading up on the, all that stuff and you know what the Rock is doing in the XFL trying to get these young guys opportunities. Um, do you see like are you around guys where you can tell like they have that same hunger like hey I want to get back in the league? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody here feels like we were supposed to be in the NFL, and you know, a lot of the guys either they're like me and they just were there and they got cut or like a lot of guys have been there and they've played in the league for some years. And it's just like, at no matter which way you put it pretty much here, everybody has league experience. And even the guys that don't have league experience, they're still really good players and really good athletes. It's just, maybe they didn't have the same opportunity. So they're still trying to prove it, but yeah, for sure. I think I'm going up against great competition, like on a daily basis. Okay, so who would you say on the record, off the record, on the record or off the record, who would you say so far throughout your whole career has been the, the best corner you've went up against? Best corner I went up against. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. I ain't going to lie. The best corner that I faced was the corner who's now on the Rams, but he played for at South Carolina State, Kobe Durant. He went to uh yeah, he went to South Carolina State. He was he was nice. He was he's really athletic, but you know, sometimes with athletic corners, like they're not too technical. So you just like they're athletic, you can beat them with their own athleticism. He was athletic and technical on top. I'm like, bro, come on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean I, I got him a couple times, but nah, he was he was on that for most of the day. So 
Mm-hmm. Now, he by far was probably the best corner that I faced. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, bro, like you going against good comp every day and stuff. But, bro, I'm looking on. It seems like every time I get on Instagram, the showboat's posting a highlight clip of you, bro. Like, you either you mossing somebody, you mossing and Tony toe tapping somebody on the sideline. Like, I seen uh one of your, I think one of your catches was on uh, Undisputed, right? Like, the top play. How is it, like, you going from, man, like, you know, your whole journey, like you said, and kind of being the underdog, how is it just to, like, see, like, man, I'm on TV. Like, Shannon Sharp's talking about my clips right now. Like, how is that feeling? It's it's crazy. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Because other people send it to me, and I don't even see it. And they're like, yeah, you, did you see that? I'm like, see what? And then they'll send it. I'll be like, oh, I'm on TV. <laughs> so, nah, it, it's just crazy. But I try to keep the same. I still haven't made it yet, you know. And so, I mean, that's about it. But it's the easiest way to put it is it's crazy. I don't know how else to say it other than that. <laughs> bro, you, you as humble as ever, bro. I love it, fam. Um one thing that, uh, of many things, bro, like I said, that I always admire about you is just your your even kill nature, bro. You can be at the lowest of lows, the highest of high. You'll never know what you, bro. It's like you got that, like that same look on your face. You'll just be, <laughs> and it just be, bro, it be having me cracking up. But I've learned a lot from you and having you in my friend circle, bro. Um, you know, and like, Keeping people around like that, bro, is like, I think it's very heartwarming and knowing that, man, like adversity is going to hit whenever, you know, and, you know, blessings are, are going to, from the man above, are going to always like shower down upon you in those right times. But it's like, I feel like the same energy you receive when you get a blessing, man, you still got to, got to thank God through the hardships too, bro. And I think that's allowed you to propel. And you built your character on a strong foundation. You know, you didn't, it's not like you was like, okay, when, when I get to the NFL, I'll start being like grateful for what I have. Nah, bro. Like, like you say, you made the best of what you had, whether it was a bowl of Reese's puff or like signing contract, bro. Like, nah, I, I want to uh, just say, bro, like, like, I really like appreciate you like sharing this, man. That, you know, you feel like you'll always like live by and really mean something to you. So I actually got two. Is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So one of them is uh, Ephesians 2.10, which says, For you are God's masterpiece. He has created you anew in Christ Jesus, so you can do the good things he planned for you long ago. Right? And, man, it's just like, that one is so... He had a plan for me and a purpose for me long before I was even thought about from my mom's perspective and all that stuff. So it's just crazy to know that he cares for me. He loves me and stuff. So that's that's always good. And the other one is for the king trust in the Lord and through the unfailing love of the most high, he will not be moved. So that's actually like my life scripture, right? So Ryan means little king. Shout out to my mom and my dad for naming me that. When it says the king trusts in the Lord, like, it's just like, yo, everything I do, I just have to trust in God. And I just know that I'm going to be taken care of at the end of the day. So you put both of those together. And yeah, that's 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 it. That's the most simple way to put it. That's it. That's me. That's me. Right, bro. <clears throat> um, Like you said, man, like, God, when we was in the womb, bro, he had a plan for all of us now. He also gives you the power of choice. You know, you could have easily, um, when you hit hardships, whether, you know, like, whether that's when you was in college and even before then, like, whenever you hit hardships, it would have been easy to just been like, you know what, like, I'm going to walk on, man. I'm not being called to, to these, you know, different meetings and stuff like that. I could easily just pack my bags. I'll just go home, bro. Or, but like you said, like, it's like you, you felt that God given dream inside of you. You just like, man, okay, 
I'm going to do whatever it is that I got to do on my end, whether that's showing up to meetings that I ain't got no business being that or, <laughs> you know, just just betting on yourself, bro. And, and God rewarded you with that courage, you know, and you got to have courage. Like you said, man, like like sometimes, you know, you may not not be. You may, you may not be, you know, glorified or, or always highlighted, but you've always did it to glorify God's name, you know, and that's that's allowed you to propel. It's like you could have easily been like, hey, I signed this contract. I'm finna go buy me a Benz or I'm finna go do this. But like you said, it's like that that humble nature that, that God put in inside of you. It's like, it, it further proves his plan for you. It's like, OK, Ryan, humble beginnings, right? I'm going to start you off. I'm going to mold you. I'm a, you know, you're going to have these humble beginnings as a walk on as things like that. And it's teaching you valuable lessons to where when you get these opportunities, you're not just wilding out, you know, it's like, you know, how to, how to handle yourself. And, um, I think that's good, bro, for sure. Yeah, and you feel me? I just feel like I've been blessed with it. So who am I to not use the gifts that he's given me? Mm -hmm. like, you know, we've mm -hmm. all been gifted with something and to just not use our gifts is just crazy. So it's, you just got to use what you're given and it'll take care of the rest of you. Like we in your corner, God's in your corner. And uh, I just want to keep, you know, letting you know, man, I'm proud of you as a brother, bro, as a, as a close friend, you know, I know, um, like I said, we may not as t talk as much, but Man, it's always, you know, it's always love, bro. And uh, I'm grateful to have you in my circle, for real, bro. Yeah, it's always love. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate yeah. you for having me on here. I'm proud of you. I'm watching you. You feel me? I watched the first episode, and I'm like, yo, my man's out here really doing it, really killing it. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just proud of you sitting back. <laughs> like, go, damn it, go, damn it. Yeah, so for sure. Proud of you, bro. For sure, bro. Um, real quick, go ahead and uh, tell the viewers, your Instagram handle, your Twitter handle, whatever it is, so they can follow up on you. All right. So my Instagram handle is Ryan.Mac15. And together, we will be better than ever. Made a promise we can do it together. And I ain't breaking my word. I just wish that I could fly like a bird.